Hey everyone, Vladimir is here with our multi-platform game development tutorial part 26. So in the previous lesson we have implemented the sound, but there's no music. And what game is there without a music? So today let's actually fix that and see how it plays out. Get it plays out. Alright, without further ado, let me see show you the following. Here's my desktop. Uh first we have our sound manager class, right? And in the sound manager class, uh, I think we just need to introduce a new variable. Public, actually make it private. Private static music variable called music. I just call it battle music or B music in short. And let's make two functions. The first one would be uh, stop battle music because it's much simple it's much more simpler and we actually check if B music is not null we stop it and then we just assign new null to it alright so this one was simple and next let's just make another function called play battle music and what it's going to do is going to load a new music from an internal file which we have prepared in the previous lesson as you remember music music plus random number from 0 to 5 plus extension dot mp3 uh, so why are we loading the music right now and not in our assets because you know the music is much more heavier in the size. Uh, we can load the sounds as our game assets, but music should be streamed. So instead of preloading the music, it just opens the music file and then reads it while the game progresses. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to set the music looping in case the player takes a lot of time to kill the enemy. And after that we can safely tell the game to play it. Alright, after we have implemented those two small functions, let's go to our game screen. And when we initialize the game screen, let's start playing the music. Alright, after we create the background, I guess. Yeah, like right after we create the background, just play battle music. I think it's going to be alright. Uh, what we are going to do next is we need to stop the music when the game stops. So in our dispose function, right before we call anything else, just call our sound manager and uh, call stop battle music. Let's run the game to show what you what's going on. And if you notice, after you start the game, the music starts playing. You probably don't hear anything because it was quite loud, at least in my speakers. But yeah, the music starts playing and you notice tremendous difference when the music plays. So one of the smallest changes code-wise that you can do, but that makes a lot of impact, is adding the music and sound to your game. Alright, so we have the music and we have the sound, but we cannot toggle them, turn them off when the player just doesn't want them. So today I'm going to do exactly that. Let me show you what I have. I actually introduced four different icons. The sound related. No, sound zero, sound one, sound two, sound three. So we're going to make four sound modes. Basically this is the volume of the sound from zero to 100%. I guess it will be zero, 33, 66, and uh, 100%. And without further ado, Let's make it happen. So first things first, let's load up the images. In our resources class, let's check out, let's create a new array of texture region drawables called sound btn, basically the sound button textures. And when we load everything, initialize the array, new texture region drawable for basically load up our sound images into our array. 
create new texture region draw drawable from game sprites where we find the region called sound plus i so right this loads our sound images after we have loaded the sound images let's make sure we have the backend which is ready to receive the musical adjustments so let's go to our sound manager and let's introduce actually let's not go to our sound manager let's go to our game progress slide since we only are going to have one settings, I think it's going to make sense to store it in game progress, but if you are more serious about the settings, make a separate setting class that is similar to game progress, but yeah, keep it only to handle settings. So what we're going to do, we need to declare a constant to indicate the maximum possible sound volume. Since we have four images from 0 to 3, it's going to be 3. And uh, we also need a static variable. You yeah, actually move the sound volume to the top so you can use it right away. So static volume, static variable called current vo sound volume, uh, which is equal to max sound volume by default, but we are going to adjust it by saving and loading. So create a new save key for this, just to keep track what's going on. Sound volume, and let's call it sound volume. I'm not very creative with the names. And first adjust the load function, where we load everything up. Here, sound volume equals references get integer save key sound volume. And by default, it's going to be max sound volume. So, if we don't have any volume saved before, we assign the maximum possible sound volume to our sound volume variable. And the saving is should be done in a similar way. Let's just uh, put integer of our save key sound volume and pass sound volume there. So saving and loading is done. What we need to do is we need to make a function that says to that increases the volume. I think it makes sense to do it here. Let me create a public static function uh, called toggle volume. Basically, it will increase the volume by one, and if the volume reaches the maximum, and the next value will be overboard. It just uh, throws down, resets the volume again, essentially disabling it. Uh, so sound volume plus one. If sound volume is greater than maximum sound volume, set the sound volume to zero. I think that makes sense. After that, let's go to our sound manager and actually make our sound volume matter, like make it affect our game. So first thing that we need to do is we need to adjust play random sound volume function and see this is why it is important to you know centralize some of the functions in one place because then you can adjust them easily we do not need to go to our swing walk coin sounds separately we just need to adjust our uh, play sound at random volume function so what we are going to do is going to we are going to take the sound volume value and divided by maximum possible sound volume so quite simple this will adjust it to a necessary level while keeping in mind the uh, randomness of the volume uh, similar thing we need to do with the music where we play the battle music function let's just add a line that sets the volume to our game progress sound volume divided by game progress maximum sound volume but here we need to cast it to the float the thing is set volume function if you can press control b on it you will see that there is a value that just needs to be given from 0 to 1 float and if we are using both integers then it is processed as division of integers and so you'll either get only 0 to 1 value you won't be getting 0 0.66 or 0 0.33. So therefore we need to cast the sound volume to float. This is the first thing that we needed to do. 
after that we need to actually handle it in the middle of the play you know it's clear here that the when we start the music it will use the existing volume but what what happens if we want to switch the volume during the battle which will happen a lot of time that's why i think we need a function to adjust the volume it's going to call our game progress toggle volume function and after that if our music is playing if it's not equal null we just set the volume the same way that we set it in our play battle music don't forget to cast it to a float and uh, yes this will set the volume properly now the only thing left to do is we need our button to do so go to our game screen class introduce a new variable at the top uh, of type image button and I've called it sound button S and D BTN. for some reason I like skipping vowels right those things are called vowels whatever uh, at the end of our game screen constructor or rather before we update the camera let's just initialize our silent button to the new image button and we pass our sound button image which we look up by our sound volume because sound volume is essentially an index of the sound image we need to adjust position accordingly so we set our position to be equal to the width of the game stage minus the width of the sound button because we want it at the right bottom corner uh, minus the width of the sound button and uh, for example minus some fixed value 10 and 10 from the bottom so it's going to be on the right bottom corner after that we also need to add it to our game stage and we also need to assign a listener to it a new click listener the default click listener but we need to override the touch up function override public void touch up what is called that way which takes the input event event float x float y uh, pointer button yeah this is the proper one so when the button is clicked after the button is released we adjust volume in our sound manager and then we need to change the image of the button to indicate the new volume so we get the button style and we change image up to be equal to the new sound button button according to the game progress sound volume index also call the super touch up method and pass everything else because if you are not going to call it the button will be still marked as pressed and you don't want that because you want to reuse the button as much as you want to so actually if you run the game now you are going to notice that the button is there see bottom right corner but you cannot really press it and this happens because we are setting our input processor to our game screen which is which captures all the input so we need to use our game stage as our input processor so what happens to our game screen first we need to remove all mentions of the input processor here and second we need to move our key down functions when we capture the keyboard presses for the movement we need to move it to our game stage so to do that first things first i'm just copying the key down function i'm just cutting it by pressing Control x and i'm removing all the other functions since they were empty and we're not doing anything and i'm going to move it to our game stage to do this we simply need to add a new listener to our game stage game stage add listener and new input listener and you need to override our key down function but it won't override it because it's a bit different in our input listener input event event key code and then you just check the key code 
and see what's going on. So this should do it. Let me run the game and see what's going on. If we run the game now and press the button, we see that sound is actually adjusted. We've disabled it right now, then we enable it at 33%, then at 66%, and then at 100%. As you can notice, it's quite loud. So right, uh, I think this concludes this part of the tutorial. Uh, I've done polishing the game. There are lots of things that you can still do. You can add abilities for your characters, you can add floating text on damage and so on and so on. So the possibility to polish your game never ends. But after this I'm going to focus on the next tutorial part when we add the Android integration and the Android stuff so you can put it on your Google Play Market. As for now, I think that does it for now. I'm going to put the game into web. I'm going to give you the link to the web so you can try the game online if you want to. And I think that does it for now. Thank you for watching. Have fun programming and Vladimir is out. Never stop developing, guys.